So tonight, uh, Jim Kruckstank is with us. Jim uh, has been a club president. He is a cl longstanding club treasurer. Uh, he is the incoming district treasurer, uh, and which we're, ex we're excited about there. He's also an assistant governor. Uh, he has a, a background in numbers, and uh, he was very willing when I asked him to step up and, and do this. Uh, I was looking for knowledgeable people that could relate well and, and give practical talks. And so that's what we've got tonight with, with Jim Cruikshank. So, Mr. Cruikshank, it's all yours. Let me just correct one thing real quick. Uh, I'm the incoming finance chair. Sean is still going to be our treasurer for the uh, next year. So, um, thank you very much for that correction. I always get the two of them mixed up. It's not the first time I fouled it up. But Sean is our treasurer, has been our treasurer. He's also our district governor nominee designate. So the two of them will work closely. But Jim is right. He does know what job he has. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, DG. Ken. As Ken mentioned a little bit about my background, I'm also a um, CPA by trade. So I've got, you know, know where the debits and credits go most of the time. So uh, if you do have questions after this presentation and it's more into the uh, real detail, feel free to drop me an email or please feel free to give me a call. Uh, sometimes, uh, especially when you get towards your end, it can get a little challenging when the uh, outside CPA or your firm that's putting your 990 together is asking you some questions about a journal entry or whatever. So feel free to holler out if you need any help. Um, for your new board, for your new treasurers coming in, um, I know you're going to get all ready for your first board meeting. And of course, you're going to be all excited and all they're going to want to know is what's the bottom line. Let's go over our learning objectives for tonight. Um, obviously, understanding your roles and responsibilities as the club treasurer. Know how to create a budget for your club. Uh, some of you may have had experience in this and some other uh, life that you've been involved with, but uh, and this is, it's not it's difficult and there's a lot of assistance on RI and hopefully if you're in your outgoing treasure can also give you a hand with this as well. And we're going to quickly talk about the DAC DB finance module. I know that we've got clubs in the district that use QuickBooks, use DAC DB, use a couple of things. What I would probably urge you if you have not gone to any uh, software, or if you're really kind of frustrated with the software you got, take a real hard look at the uh, DACDB finance module. Our district for our actual district finance uh, actually is using the uh, DACDB finance module, and I know there's a number of clubs that use it as well. So uh, we'll go through that. Uh, your role, what do you do? Obviously, you manage club funds. And when I say that, really the board is responsible for managing the club funds, but they're going to look to you to actually supply the nuts and bolts. Collect funds and submit dues and fees. And when I say collect funds um, and submit dues and fees, if you have fundraisers uh, or other uh, functions that require Require funds to be collected. Obviously, the club will look to you to track that information to actually make those deposits, track that information. Unless you have some relationship with a third party that you know you might be doing something as a joint venture or a joint effort. But most of the time, they're going to be looking to you to make sure you manage and collect those funds. I think most of you may know that we uh, actually put on a big bike ride. And needless to say, we have sponsors, we have riders, we have a lot of different monies coming into the club. So they look to me and to track that and actually to keep um, good records of that in case there are any questions. And uh, we take a lot of those funds and put them back in the community and the not-for-profit. So obviously we want to keep a good record of that information. Uh, review and pay your club invoices. Um, and let me just mention here, some clubs have internal mechanisms to actually request payment uh, either through an outside vendor or to reimburse a member who has paid for something to an outside vendor. Uh, I would strongly encourage you to try to have some type of request form 
that your members can fill out either for that outside vendor or for them getting reimbursement. Just a good way to track it. Um, and it can be very simple. You know, who's requesting it, what it's for, and who the member is, and are you reimbursing the member or are you reimbursing the direct, the actual vendor, the outside third party? Again, it's just good policy. Uh, if you have to go back and research something, it's right there attached to the uh, check copy or the check stub. Uh, report on the state of your club finances. Um, I would encourage you, if you're not already doing this, to definitely, as a whenever your board meets, whether monthly, quarterly, uh, what have you, to share with them either monthly or quarterly updates on your finances. Uh, I would make this a policy. I would also encourage you, if you can, to share that with your club. I know that can get kind of onerous, but I would encourage you to put those PDF files on your secure library on DACDB, and then any club member can easily go out there and look at the finances. Uh, but at a, as a minimum, you should report that to your board on either a monthly or quarterly basis. Work with the uh, Rotary Foundation. Um, I would definitely encourage you and uh, our new incoming foundation chair, Gary Deals, I know I'll be glad to work with you, but if you collect monies for the foundation, if you if you got members or you're one of the clubs, and I'll tell you our club is, we I actually bill our members every quarter for uh, the foundation, a $25 uh, foundation. I collect those monies and then quarterly, I remit that to the foundation. If you have any questions about that, I'd encourage you to work with the district or with Rotary International, the foundation, if you have questions. But the key thing, especially at year end, if you collect monies for that second quarter, please get those to the foundation because some of your members might need the may want those tax deductions for the year. So please keep that timely. Uh, if you have any questions about that uh, information, you can go to this website and can i understand you'll be sharing um these this presentation so folks can go back and look or actually click on this website if they want to get into it. but it actually especially for you you new incoming uh treasurers has a lot of information uh and you'll see later there's a uh, actually a budget spreadsheet you can use to set up your budget what have you so i would encourage you to go look at that Responsibilities, preparing a budget. Um, and hopefully your um, outgoing treasurer has prepared or is working on the budget for next year. If they're, if they're not, please sit down with them and go through that process. And I'll get into a little more detail on that in just a minute. Again, collecting and paying dues, tracking the flow of funds in and out of the club. And again, this question comes at my club, and I'm sure it does you, yours as well. You can put a budget together. You can look at the income statement. But at the end of the day, what cash do you have available on hand, i.e. in the bank, to pay your bills and to support different functions? I.e. you may have a service project where you're going to have to expend funds and not get some portion of that back until uh, you complete all the paperwork with the district in order for them to reimburse you your two thousand dollars, for example. So, really try to keep a handle on how your flow of funds are looking. I what's in the bank account? What is what am I expecting for bills? What do I expect for income as far as cash inflows? I e the collection of dues, uh, receiving funds from other third parties. So. Uh, don't just get track tr on track looking at the income statement and saying, oh, we're in good shape. We've got $10,000 on the bottom line. Well, if you haven't collected your dues yet, that cash may not be in the bank. And again, just to reemphasize, reporting to the board monthly or quarterly uh, on both the financial, and I would encourage you to share with your board your, if you have delinquent members that have not kept their dues up to date. 
Um, my practice here at our club is I've sent an invoice out 15 days before the beginning of the quarter. A month later, at the end of that month, I send a statement. If I have not heard from them in the next 30 days, it goes, goes to the board. And one of the board members will actually reach out to that individual and say, hey, what's the status? Is there something going on we need to know about? Are you still interested in being a Rotarian? And I'm going to have Sean a little bit later talk about the, uh, the impact that may have on the district and RI dues. Um, the last one, uh, or just to kind of go through some others, things that I would encourage you to do, uh, and sometimes you can't do this after every meeting, but I would encourage you to make deposits as either as quickly as you can after the meetings. Uh, gather, you just don't want cash and checks sitting around. Um, I can tell you some bad stories about things laying around and all of a sudden they disappear and, you know, and no fault of anybody's, but it just happens. So I'd encourage you to, to keep, uh, you know, a very secure handle. And the best way to do is get those monies and checks into the bank as soon as you can. Uh, preparing and generating checks to vendors obviously one of your responsibilities and again i would encourage you to develop some type of internal uh, slip or request for payments so you can easily have that information available this one is a big one of next bullet is a big pet peeve of mine you just you, you got to reconcile your bank statements monthly don't get in the habit please of waiting a couple of months and then going back and trying to do that. Uh, believe me, your life will be a lot simpler uh, if you'll keep track of that and, and reconcile your bank statements. Uh, every bank cuts off on the end of the month. And if you obviously keep your dates on your entries all correct, it should, should not be too much of an effort to get that taken care of. Uh, and I found if you do it monthly, if you might, you may have one or two issues, but it's a whole lot easier to clear up one or two issues than to have a whole pile of issues after about three or four months. Um, let's see, record monthly and year end journal entries. Most of us don't have much of this to do. It's primarily at year end. Every once in a while, you'll have a situation where you have a monthly journal entry, but primarily it's year end, especially after your outside um, CPA firm looks at your in preparation of your year end and 990s that they may have. Uh, a journal entry for you to make and make sure you're comfortable with that journal entry if you don't understand it make sure they explain it to you because uh, i guarantee you the board will probably ask you to explain it to them um and obviously provide income statement and balance sheet for your 990 preparation uh to your outside uh cpa firm that's preparing that 990 for you Let's jump on preparing a budget. I'm going to stop right here. Are there any questions before um, I get into this piece of it? Okay. Hearing none. A um, couple of ways to prepare a budget. Uh, historical perspective based. And that's basically taking your last year's actuals or the last two years actual and looking at it and saying, Okay, I expect our membership to increase by three members, and I expect uh, our mills to increase a little bit if you actually have a traditional meeting and you're meeting in a uh, some restaurant or whatever. You know, the, your your vendor may say, "Hey, I'm increasing those mills by five percent next year." But basically, you're starting from your historical activity and basically building on that, uh, and it's. Pretty much what a lot of us do. Uh, it's probably easy, especially if you got a real good handle on your actual data and budget preparation. Some of you may have heard the term zero base budget. Um, this is basically kind of starting anew, looking at every line item and saying, hey, I've got 53 members. I expect 55 members next, and they're going to pay X amount of dues. This is how many I expect to attend monthly meetings, and you actually build that budget from the bottom up. Uh, it's a little bit more of an arduous process, but it'll actually 
force you to really get into the nuts and bolts of putting that budget together. I personally like a combination of both. Looking at some items and saying, hey, let's just go back and revisit that. Let's go back to ground zero. Other items, it's like, hey, I know exactly what's going to happen with that line item or that uh, area. It may be youth services. It may be international. I feel real comfortable. But there may be other areas, you you know, especially if you're taking, like I said, if you're taking, assuming the role first time of the treasurer, you may want to go back and look at ground zero so you have a good understanding of uh, where you're going. I'm going to quickly go through before that. I'm going to tell you kind of a little funny here. Obviously, uh, a budget is a guideline. It's there for you to compare your actual data as you go through the year. Okay, to make sure something isn't really askew. But the, the bottom line is, if you've got good numbers in that budget, if you've taken the time to put that budget together, it'll be a very useful tool. Obviously, if you, if you just kind of, you know, okay, I really don't have a lot of time to spend on this. I'm going to just get it together and then we'll go from there. It may not provide the real tool that you need when you're actually going through and looking at the financial and obviously when the board is looking at because again you're going to know more about the financials than anybody else in your club and you're going to have to spend some time month to month educating the board on what's going on so if you got a good solid budget to start with then it'll make your life a whole lot easier at your monthly board meeting this actual worksheet is on RI at that website I mentioned earlier. You can go in there and actually pull this up. And what I did was kind of show you some of the key areas and how it's broken down. You know, your budgeted income last year, what it was this year, uh, the amount over and under, and then what you're estimating for next year. It's actually a pretty, pretty nice spreadsheet that you can go through and feel good about what you're putting in there. And again, if you want to go back and look at ground zero, you can just say, hey, I'm not going to look at what I did last year. I'm going to go from the bottom up and go from there. But these are some of the key areas you're going to you're going to come across as you're putting, you know, looking at your financials, looking at your income statement and putting your budget together. And some of the expenses. Um, and while I'm talking about this, when you're Going through the year, if something comes up and we, you don't have an income account or an expense account because you had, there was nothing, you didn't realize you needed a budget, but all of a sudden it's come up, you may all of a sudden say, hey, we're going to take on this service project and all of a sudden you've got some different expenses and whatever. I would encourage you to take the time to put, to set up or add to your chart of accounts those line items. It'll make life a lot easier for you when you're sitting down with your board again or if members have questions, instead of saying, I don't, you know, let me go back. I'm going to have to look and see what I've dumped in miscellaneous for the, you know, and all of a sudden it gets all bogged down with all these different expenses that you dumped in instead of going in and adding those necessary line items. And again, it'll take a little bit longer right then, but it'll save you a lot of time down the road. And these are overhead, what I call kind of the administrative expenses. When you look at these different expenses, you know, what, what you're going to incur oh, probably every month throughout the year. And again, it's just what I call routine and made it uh, overhead or administrative expenses. You know, some other miscellaneous expenses. And just because, I, again, I call them miscellaneous when you make sure you have these set up as individual line items. You know, bank and legal fees, government fees, what have you. And again, this is not all inclusive or there may be things on here you, you may never use. Then you can get into meeting expenses. And then you can get into the various, uh, I call them service areas, uh, with your dues, committee expenses. And again, public relations may have five, six, ten line items under you know separate line item expenses under public relations um, membership as well so again this is just strictly a high level kind of overview for you and then you can get into various other types of expenses club raising service projects 
what have you. Again, as I mentioned, there's some clubs that are, are on the, the DACDB finance module. Our district is on it. I'm not going to read all this. I'll let you read it at some other, but it's kind of a little bit of an overview. But some of the detail behind this, probably the, the thing I like the most about the DACDB finance module is there, it's set up for Rotary clubs. If you go get QuickBooks or some other third party finance module, you're going to spend quite a bit of time setting that up if you, you don't already have a finance module or um, something. And if you're using QuickBooks and you're saying, hey, I'm tired of dealing with QuickBooks, you can actually roll your QuickBooks. DACDB will work with you to roll that information right into their finance module. And I'll tell you some of the key features which I like about it. You know, this is obviously what you would see if you pulled your club up and you can see over here towards the right, the second column down, you just click on the club finance module and off you go. But it's, it, they've streamlined the invoicing process. It makes it real possible to get your invoices out the door in minutes. You can set your vendors up, boom, it's out the door. And again, you can do this with QuickBooks, but again, I, DACDB is pretty slick. And again, uh, Sean, you have any comments on before I get too deep in this? What we're basically what we're doing is and I'll be the person of at least this next year uh, that will be sending out the uh, club invoices. And and basically what we do is we bill the clubs uh, twice a year. We bill the beginning of January and then we do it again uh, the in the beginning of July. Um, so. They're, they're basically all clubs will be billed twice a year. Uh, the, the dues are $22 and 50 cents for district dues. Uh, one thing I will say is it's very important of all club treasurers here, at least that are on board with us here tonight for this, uh, that you do make sure that your membership role is accurate uh, because how this module works is uh, it bills based on, you know, your members listed, the number of members that you have listed in your club in DACTV. So it's important that, that all this information is accurate because what's going to happen is when I go to generate these bills, uh, which the next round will be in, in early July, for the new rotary year, which is considered first quarter 21-22, uh, uh, it's going to bill based on how many members in your club. So for example, if Hendersonville has 147 members, uh, as of July one, they're going to get billed 147 times $22 and 50 cents. And we do this basically semi-annually twice a year. So what I normally do is I'll send the invoices out beginning of the month in January and in July. And then we usually ask all clubs to pay, uh, those invoices, uh, you know, within 30 day period, then after 30 days, we'll, we'll send folks out a reminder. Uh, one, one thing that I do want to bring up that's been a little bit of a challenge uh, since Gary Dills and I started this whole thing with the DACTV module uh, from the district level is a lot of the satellite clubs, several of them do not have contact people for the invoices. So, Usually if you're listed in there as a club treasurer in your satellite club, and I don't know how many satellite clubs we have on board on tonight's Zoom, but uh, treasurers that is, uh, if there's not a treasurer listed for the satellite, your satellite club, then what I've been doing is just emailing the parent club's district dues invoice to the, the parent club's treasurer, and then the satellite club's district invoice to the a parent club's treasurer as well, um, so that nothing gets overlooked. So sometimes some of the treasurers will see two different invoices that are coming in. And the reason is uh, there's usually not a treasurer that has been designated for that satellite club. And that's really the biggest challenge that we have. And we'll, we'll usually run into about four or five of these every single time that we uh, do the billing process. It's gotten a lot better since we started this back in uh, Tiffany's year, which was uh, July of, of 2019, because uh, I think we had 10 or 11 clubs at that point that didn't have any anyone designated as a treasurer. But uh, normally we send it out to the treasurer and then we copy the president on it 
and that way we know that the bill will will get there. Um, but that's what we do now. We're going to have there will be an alteration this year uh, to the bills. Uh, usually, what we do is we will put in there, please remit to whatever that is. And I think uh, Jim, we're trying to iron that out as to as far as where to send the invoices in July. We'll we'll make sure everybody knows that particular, you know, whether it's a PO box or wherever it's going to go uh, prior to the July billing. But a uh, main thing is just make sure your rosters are, and that's going to be a, a club secretary thing. Get, you know, if you get with your club secretaries, make sure your rosters are accurate. And then uh, when, when come billing time in July, uh, there'll, there'll be an accurate bill that'll go out. Cause you, you certainly don't want to pay for someone uh, that's no longer in your club. I mean, that, that, that's a big thing. The other courtesy thing that we do, and Jim touched on this as well, um, is we do uh, remind people, and, and Gary and I have been doing this, we'll remind clubs uh, on past dues on the international. And I like to check the, the uh, rotary.org because that's where you'll find uh, the international uh, invoices. And they're, honestly, they're kind of old school. So that to be module is a lot more advanced they're, they're a lot more old school, so we'll, we'll go in there and we'll be able to tell who's paid and, and who's not. But Rotary International is pretty tough on clubs um, that, that don't pay their international dues. And the international dues, guys, I think, what is it, forty one seventy five per member every six months? I think that's yeah. out yeah, there. Pretty good. Like that. Yeah, it's almost twice as much as what we charge uh, for the district, which has been $22.50 for a while now, I guess it's been at least six or seven years. Um, but that, that's the other thing too, is you've got two different things going on. And, and there's some clubs out there that have gotten confused. In fact, uh, we had a club a couple of years ago that sent their district dues to Rotary International. And then, you know, they still had the Rotary International uh, dues that were still outstanding. So uh, when you get an invoice from me, it's going to be the district dues Strictly the district dues, the twenty-two fifty per member. Rotary International is going to send that directly to you, uh, the treasurer. And I, I think it's any any of the officers listed in your club, treasurer, president. I think it's copied on that too. Uh, they're going to send you the international uh, invoice, and that's the forty-one seventy-five per member. So that's going to be a completely different thing. But yeah, all the district payments they all go to to us, uh, Jim, myself. Um, and the international dues get sent directly to Evanston. And I know there's been a little bit of confusion about that, and, and, and rightly so, because they both come in on emails now, as opposed to the district being uh, mailed out to you. So uh, anybody have any questions? Uh, Sean, let me, let me reinforce something you said. Make sure yep. it's extremely, extremely blunt. When he says clean up your roster, that's important because when you come back July 15th and say, oh, we had seven people that we really hadn't been watching too well and we right. cut them off the rolls because they, they were in arrears on dues and everything else. That's too late. Yes. Right. Yes. Is already and it's, it's district. Yeah. Has and and uh, governor Ken, it's a nightmare to have to go back and try to fix all that stuff. So that's why uh, we're, we're very blunt about this. Please, please, please treasurers, presidents, secretaries, and really it's the secretary's job to make sure that that roster is tight Make sure, you know, prior to June the 30th, right? I would really set a goal making it, you know, no later than June the 30th, make sure that your roster is absolutely accurate. People that are no longer on your club, people you've purged, maybe they've resigned, what have you. Because when I do the billing, which is usually the second or third day of July, those folks that they're still on there are going to get billed. And, you know, I've had satellite clubs say, hey, I've only got, you know, I got billed for 12 people and I've only got seven people in my club. Well, that's because you didn't, you know, adjust your invoice and remove those folks that are no longer in your club. By the time I ended up billing the club, you know, that's what you're going to get billed for. So you don't want to pay for people that you don't have. Uh, and that, that's why it's just very, very important that we make sure that that's accurate. And I, I would really set a goal and say, Hey, by June 30th, no later. And even I'd said it earlier than that, just to make sure that, that, you have an accurate roster so that I can invoice a club with accurate numbers. And that's especially important this year because with the COVID year, some mm -hmm. people in arrears on dues, now that you're going to be starting to meet in person, you're yep. expecting them back and they just say, nah, I'm not coming back. 
and I'm not paying my dues. Well, you've just exactly paid, you haven't cleaned it up. You've just paid another six months of dues for them. That's right. That's right, Governor Ken. Uh, you, you, yeah, that's exactly right. So, you know, you got somebody that says, "Hey, you know, I don't, I don't enjoy the fact that we're not having fellowship, or I'm just not interested, whatever." You know, you need to make sure that if they're going to resign, I mean, they, they need to resign. And, and if they do so, I don't know, whatever, whatever your club procedure is on resignations, I would go ahead and, and have that person uh, removed off that roster, uh, you know, by the end of June and no later. And I'll share with you, you you're going to have a member that is on the roster June 30th and in the middle of July, they resign. I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do yeah. about that, but yeah. I would encourage you and uh, kind of reinforce them. We we'll won't beat this horse any longer, but if if you're looking at your roster, I would encourage you to start looking at April. Well, probably in like October and April, because you're going to have to go to the board. You're going to have to reach out to these people, you know. And are you still interesting? Get your dues caught up. If you're not, then it's going to have to go through the process. And if you terminate someone on DAC DB, which we all do, it takes a little bit of time to get to RI. So I'd encourage you, don't wait till June 30th. If you know somebody's off the rolls, get them off the rolls. And that way, uh, RI, Rotary International, will also get their end updated. Because I've been caught in our club where we're like the 25th of June, 26th of June, we got somebody off. And that information didn't get to uh, RI, and they sent us a bill for that individual. And it's kind of like once it happens, it's done. So the sooner the better. And it's you know it's probably one of those things we should all keep up with all the time. But it's just I would strongly encourage you to keep up with it. And Sean is very good about getting them out. You know, and it's right after uh, December and right after June. RI. It's usually 15, 20 days later, you'll get an email. So just keep an eye out for it. Stay on top of your roster and make sure you're, you're treasure. If I could, if I could say one quick thing, there was a good question there. Uh, and I believe it was, uh, one of the, it was a Jim uh, Zellner from uh, Blowing Rock had sent a question. Is someone that's considered uh, on leave of absence, uh, are they going to get billed? And and I, I would believe the answer is yes on that. I, th I think Billy. The answer is yes. yes. Leave of absence yes. is an attendance requirement yes. only. They are required to pay their dues. Yes. Okay. Let me let me just. And I think Ken is the one that told me there's two types of members in RI: active and honorary. Everybody else, leave of absence, satellite, they're all going to get bills. So yes. just so you have them on a leave of absence. They're still going to receive a bill from Sean or district, and you're going to get a bill from RI for that individual on, or rule of 85 or any other category. Again, there's just, that's the easiest, I, I think it was Ken that you mentioned it to me. It's the easiest way to remember how the whole billing function works. It's active and honorary, and you'll never get a bill on an honorary Rotarian. So now one thing, Jim, that we do, and I, I mentioned this already earlier, but um, and, and Gary and I have been doing this as a courtesy um, is, you know, we'll, we will go in there from time to time and, and check, you know, the, the Rotary International, you know, who's been able to, you know, who paid and who's not paid and just kind of give you a heads up, you know, ahead of time, because right. yeah, you don't want Rotary International <laughs> sending, sending oh, no. an email. It's, it's, it's just not a thing. So yeah, we'll, you know, we, we do that as a courtesy, um, you know, obviously we're responsible strictly for the district dues and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, we, we want to help the clubs along too, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Sure. Appreciate it. Good input, Sean. Um, and again, what I like about that DB, it'll link to your attendance module. If you're using QuickBooks or some other third party vendor, you're not going to, you're going to have to go in there and obviously set up all your members and keep track of them. If, if they do get turned, if they do term, then you got to go in and delete them out of the system or make them inactive. Whereas this is just updates all the time. So it's, it's just a whole lot easier to uh, keep track of, of your members and your membership billing. You can, uh, and um, uh, Billy may have something to say about this, but again, we, one of the nice things in about uh, DACDB, once you get to, 
iPay or PayPal set up on DACDB, your members can pay you via credit card. Uh, there are fees associated with that. So keep that in mind when, you know, you've got dues of $160 and all of a sudden you start taking all these uh, credit card payments from your members. If you're charged two or three, four percent for that service, your dues may not originally been set up to handle that additional uh, expense that's being uh, charged from that third party uh, payment system. So just keep that in mind. At this point, if you haven't used it, if you have questions, please reach out to one of us. We'll, you know, we'll get you the answer and use it. Again, and I haven't mentioned this, but DACDB has, like with the finance module, they have a lot of tutorial help behind the system. So there's a lot of information there, but especially setting up iPay and pay, it, it can get a little sticky, but don't let it, don't let it deter you from your mission. You can, <laughs> once, you can, once you get it set up, you'll be, it'll make life easier for you if you, you do want to set credit card payments from your members. Uh, obviously, customizable charges. And when I say this, you can set up like um, kind of like what Sean was talking about from the district, you know, $22.50 per member. You can set up different, you know, for dues or you're having a social event and you want to charge them for the Christmas party. You know, you set up Christmas party and then a charge. And then when you go to bill, you just pull that line item up and it in invoices them directly on that for that line item. And again, you can set it up for, you know, socials for uh, like if you're charging them a certain amount to attend the installation dinner, uh, you when you go to invoice them, you can have that already set up. So you just click on it and it automatically inserts it on the invoice. Uh, customizable templates, you can set your invoice up, you can put your logos on it, you can do all that kind of fun stuff and get real creative. Um, and like I said, and once you get it set up, and you can set them up for like if you've got members that pay quarterly or you may have some members that say, hey, I just want to pay once a year. You can set up an invoice for annual payments or semi-annual payments. So, you know, you can be you, you can really customize it to what your members want. Obviously, they want to pay annually. You know, they'll, they need to pay that in July along with everything else because you're getting um, you're obviously getting. Um, invoices from Sean and RI for the dues at the beginning of the year. So I would encourage you to, you're going to let them pay annually, collect it up at the beginning of the year. Um, kind of touched on all, all this, but, you know, with member data, because you've got all that information on DACDB already, so you might as well be able to use it uh, as far as invoicing. Uh, accounting, um, it tracks all your invoices. Um, you know, this is kind of redundant, but, you know, some of the key features, the budget, you can set up your budgets in DACDB, so it automatically is there. I, I know right now I'm having to go into QuickBooks and set up a budget every year, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then if somebody wants to look at a comparison, then I've got to pull that information over, whereas DACDB, you've already got that information, the actual information sitting there. So it just makes life a little bit easier for you. And again, I'm not here to sell you on DACDB finance module. It's just, like I said, it's geared for rotary clubs where other uh, other vendors are not. Um, obviously, you can reconcile your bank accounts and all that good stuff. Check printing, you know, there's, I think there's like three different types of checks they'll print on um, if you want to use that. Some, some people still, you know, go in there and put the bill in. They, scratch out a manual check, you know, if that works for you, but just make sure you're tracking it in DACDB when you're doing that or QuickBooks or what other module you're using. Um, and I've looked at this, there's over 20 reports available and you can customize some other reports. So uh, your basic income statement, finance, you know, balance sheet, cash flow, comparatives, what have you. So it's, it's all there. And you can obviously get into journal ledger and journal journal reports, and you know some of the standards are, again. Um, obviously, if you're already using a third party, you can roll a lot of this information in. 
otherwise you do have to kind of set up your chart of accounts. A lot of it's predefined. It's kind of already out there. But as I mentioned earlier, you may want to get into some uh, additional uh, accounts, but very easy to set up, uh, not difficult at all. Again, that's what's nice about having it being, you know, connected with Rotary. Um, a lot of what we already use is out there for you to use instead of having to go in there and initially set it up. And again, you can export this to uh, different, uh, uh, to Excel and to other uh, packages that you can use for tax purposes, get, get that to your outside accountant. You can Jim? import. Yes, ma'am. Um, there was a question. What is the essential reports that you'd need for each board meeting? I would look at your balance sheet, look at your income statement. And if you have the capability of printing off an income statement that compares to your budget and to your prior year, those are probably the reports you need to have. Uh, and you set it up in a way that's like, I can tell you at our club, we have administrative and then we have the different service areas and then we have our big fundraisers. So anybody on the board can quickly look at their area, their committee or their uh, different functions and say, oh yeah, we're on budget or, you know, hey, we're right in line with what we did last year or hey, well, why all of a sudden are we spending so much money in this area? So balance sheet, income statement, and if you can get that income statement to compare to, to budget and one to compare to prior year, I think you're good to go. You should be able to answer any question a, a board member throws at you. Yep. The one thing I'd add to that, Jim, would be those are absolutely your financial statements. But the other management thing is what we talked about before. In accordance with your club's policy, the list of delinquent members, members delinquent on thing, and it may be after 45 days or 60 days or 30 right. days, whatever you want. That's not an accounting report. That's a management report. But I'd throw that in there, too, as a, as a regular recurring item. Excuse me, Jim. No, oh, no, I'm glad you mentioned it. Uh, yes, if, you're, if, if you've got some delinquent accounts, print that accounts receivable report off. And most of the time, you can set those up by aging. Uh, obviously, if you just sent bills out the first of the month, you know, it might, but if you've got some accounts on there that's been out there 60, 90 days, print that AR report off and bring that to the board meeting. And <clears throat> I'm sure uh, as you're reporting to your uh, board, you can quickly go through there and say, hey, Joe and Jane and Jim are 90 days late on the last quarter's billing. Uh, can somebody reach out to them? I've already sent them an invoice. I've already sent them a statement. I've emailed them, no response. So good point, Ken, thank you. Security, I mean, uh, I'm not going to go into this, but uh, the system is very secure. Uh, you, you have to have a level four. You've got obviously password protected, all that kind of good stuff. And you can designate certain individuals to have different levels, i.e. just inquiry or somebody to have the ability to go in and actually input or change data. And like I said, there's a ton of information on DACDB about this and a lot of help modules that if you have a question, it's there. Now, I, I put in the chat the telephone number for them to call for DACDB and it's extension number four because Marvin wanted to know the annual cost and I believe it's by club size. So Asheville would pay more than somebody with maybe 13 members. Um, and Miss Vicki, my treasurer is online and they ask, um, is there a fee? And I said, yes. And she said, it's well worth the charge. And yes. what happens on July 1, is Jim is the treasurer as designated by DACDB and he's able to get in there and change anything. And on July 1, whoever's designated treasurer for next year has access and it's visual and he's ready to go. So it's not, oh, well, let's get together and I'll give you, you know, my copy of QuickBooks and we'll see if we can't get something loaded onto your computer. Nope, just whoever's the treasurer has access and can start editing. It's awesome. Yeah. Questions? Again, the only thing I'd really like to reiterate, re, reiterate to everybody in attending is stay on top of it, keep your board informed, 
And if you can go out there and use that DB, uh, set up a, you know, under your secure files in your club to put certain, and right now I can share with you, we actually have, and I shared this with Ken, we have our constitution, we have our bylaws, we have three years of budgets out there. And every month I update it for both the minutes from the board meeting and the financials. So any member can go out there on our club on DACBB and look at any of those documents. Uh, try to be as transparent as we can. And if you're concerned, there's something in there that, you know, hey, I don't know if I want those. Well, <laughs> then we got a problem at a, a, a different level because anything you discuss at the board meeting regarding finances or any other club business, you should feel free to share with your club. Again, I'll turn it back over to you. So is there anything that you hoped you were you were turn, doing into this to make sure you got the answer to this thing and we, we didn't even talk about it? Is there anybody with those questions? Please raise a hand or, or just speak up. I appreciated you mentioning uh, the link on accounts as a management uh, report uh, for the board. Are there any other management reports related to the numbers uh, that you think we should think about? I'll speak and then let Jim correct me. I think that's the biggest one as far as that, because the other should be included in the income statement or the balance sheet. Right. Uh, that, that should be there. The income statement, of course, is a is a record of how you're doing. It's your profit and loss. And a balance sheet is a snapshot of what's available at that time. So if your balance, your income statement looks great, but there's no money on hand, it's going to be tough to pay that bill. So it's a combination of those two answers an awful lot of questions. Yeah, Michael, the other report I would add, if you have a huge fundraiser at your club or you may have some big service projects, you may have the capability of accounting for that as a separate income statement. You might want to share that with your board right after the event. You know, like with our big assault, I share that separate income statement with our board so they can quickly see and well, I'll compare it to prior years so they can say, hey, you know, our number of riders were up or income was down, what have you. But that's strictly up to your board and how uh, you want to prepare it. But again, on our income statement or overall, that information is there too. But it just sometimes it's easier for them to look at it. Yeah, so that's a good point for us because we do have we do have a couple of of major fundraisers and uh, uh, we're often asked, well, we never see it accounted for separately. We, know, we don't understand. So to this point, and the other is some of the smaller fundraisers, you know what the gross is, but nobody ever puts the expenses to it. And sometimes it better be called a friend raising thing because you just lost your shirt on it. And, and that so goes back to Jim Cruikshank saying that when you do have a, like a fundraiser, that's a new one, Add a line item, expenses, you know, income and expenses so that you can figure that out. It's not in a big miscellaneous bucket. Yeah. yeah. That will drive it. That raises more questions. As soon as you don't know the answer to it, somebody's going to start, oh, well, what's going on? You know, hey, you know, everybody, <laughs> yep. I'm sure we've all been there. <laughs> yep. Great, great question, Michael. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Michael. Ken, let me, let me just reinforce that. If you have any detail, debit or credit, or hey, where is this going on a balance sheet or something like that, and you don't want to pay that outside account, feel free to email me, give me a call. I'll be glad to walk through it with you and hopefully uh, answer those kind of questions for you. Yeah. We are thinking next year we will do a big push to have members pay through Rotary Direct. What is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? A I think thing. it's <laughs> awesome. It takes it out of the hand of the treasurer, and you don't have to hope that the treasurers turn it in in a timely manner. It goes in and it's debited from that credit card that day, and it shows up typically in your report within two days. Right now, if you send a check in with a report, it's taken three to four weeks for that money to get credited to your club. It's awesome. And people, really like it. They don't have to worry about it. Um, we have several members that do $10 a month. And after they've done it for a while, they do $25 a month. They find it doesn't hurt. And it, you know, it, it, it boosts, it has boosted 
Rotary Club of Franklin Daybreak. We happen to be number one in the district in giving. And I think that's one of the reasons. But I would, I would encourage you, Michael, that if you go to direct uh, to try to get the, get the board behind it to have all the members go to direct if you can. Yeah. Otherwise, you're tracking half of them paying you through the dues, and then there's some people paying direct. Now you're having to go to the Rotary, the foundation reports, and figure out who's done what. And it, it'll be a whole lot easier if you can just kind of get them all on direct. Now, one thing, Thank don't you. just tell them to go pay direct because we've had two new members this year that went, they went to rotary.org and they hit the give button. And they weren't oh. logged in the Rotary didn't know who they were. <laughs> so I mean, you really need to emphasize, go to rotary.org. If you don't have a login, create a login and then hit the give button. Right. Jim, thank you so much. Great job, good practice, straightforward. Uh, thank you. Thorough approach, uh, appreciate it. And I hope the people feel it was beneficial. I think it was. Billy, thanks for keeping us up on the screen the whole time. Thank you all for being here. Uh, thanks for stepping Thank you, up for the jobs you're doing with your clubs. And as I've ended them all, go forth and do good.